Hey everybody, welcome back. This time I want to take a look at Tarantella. And so, kind of like I was talking earlier today about how I break the box suites up into several key parts so that we can tackle them over a few lessons, I do the same thing with the Tarantella. I usually break it into about three core lessons where we look at the first page in D minor, then the second lesson we'll look at the second page in D major, and then we'll look at the coda and start playing and doing run-throughs and things like that. So Tarantella is in a classic ABA form, which means page one and page three are actually identical before the coda section at the very end. So that's a good thing because that means that if you've got uh, page number one down, you've got two thirds of the piece, right? So I'm gonna first play through that movement and then I'm gonna go ahead, or sorry, that page, and then I'm gonna just highlight a couple teaching tips that I usually um, pass down to students as those parts. Okay, here we go. A little bit under tempo. I usually play this pretty fast, but I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. perfect on that top shift that I had up to the high D natural there, but uh, I didn't claim it was going to be perfect. So let's talk about a few things. Let's dive right in from the beginning. We'll kind of move through in chronological order. So the first thing that I hear consistently across a lot of students is incorrect rhythm and then the first really high run up to the A harmonic that you have. So in a couple lines in you have... So first and foremost, that rhythm. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, and. People want to hold on to this first F natural too long, and then it becomes one, three, and their whole rhythm has been thrown off for that scale that's coming up. Now, the other thing that you'll want to do is make sure that you've got that scale itself practiced. So I recommend slowing down the tempo, doing separate bows instead of slurred, and then doing like a 5x repeat, right? So you just go. Good. Two. Great, and once you stack five good ones of those on top of each other, then you're gonna ratchet up that tempo a little bit. Right, and after you've done several of those, Maybe you want to go ahead and put the slur back in. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Okay, and then maybe all the way back. Great. The last comment that I have on that is make sure that you dive right into that next downbeat. A lot of players want to give themselves space between some of these phrases that doesn't actually exist. So watch out for that. If you're gonna if you're gonna have a piano player playing with you, you're not gonna make friends um, if you if you go ahead and wait between all those phrases. So is a little bit. Right? Make sure that it has a little hop to it. Great. 
So the next sections that I want to look at, I want to just make sure that you understand and have what you need for uh, really the, the, the next two big shifts, right? So down, all the way down, two thirds down the page, the D minor passage. <laughs> So I have similar um, suggestion there. I would just slow it down, separate bows, almost treat it like a daily scalar exercise that you do. And then a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. The only th other thing I will say is, as we move down the cello with our left hand, we have to move down with our bow and get closer to the bridge. Otherwise, you're gonna get squawks and squeaks when, if you do this and your bow and your left hand get too close to each other. Okay, that's my main comment there. Last one, two quick ones to end the page here. Um, when you go to this B flat, I would practice D to A. Because if you get a two to two shift from D natural to A natural, you know your B flat will be right in position. And then it's just about creating that nice space between your first and second finger to get a whole step and a half step here. So. So I practice. Again, 10 times. And then maybe add the B flat. first one of each group. So it's more like It just helps me keep the timing. Now, last thing I'll say, this D minor chord is pretty challenging. The note that everybody misses is this F natural. You've got to keep it low, 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 sucked right against that first finger, or else it's going to have a natural tendency to squeak up there and be sharp. So having a low F natural while keeping a D ringing tone is really what the challenge is here. So this is the interval. That F natural and D natural that you've got to make sure you get just right. Great. That's page one of the Tarantella. Good luck with it.